Psalms 119, verse 155. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not their statues. And the LLT, NLT, the wicked are far from rescue, for they do not bother with your decrees. So be not in the faith of the saints. And the faith of the saints. We know that what goes around comes around, that vengeance is the most high. So eventually, when Christ get in position, he's going to put the nations in servitude. That's his position. So captivity is true. It will happen. If you kill with the sword, you must be killed with the sword. That will happen. But who determines all this? Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Israelite doesn't determine this. Okay? A Christian doesn't determine this. Christ does. And that's the patience of the saints. We're knowing that only he can bring the true judgment, the righteous judgment on, on the world, on the earth. It's not up to me to now boast and go before him. Yeah, this is what's going to happen to you when you don't know if you're getting in. So be not curious how the wicked shall be punished, but how what? The righteous shall be saved. You're so focused on what's going to happen to the white man, you're not getting in. All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Wahar Kwadash, double honor to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone, the men that told me this truth. Peace and blessings to you, brothers, that teach you this word, the truth and sincerity. Peace and blessings to the rest of the believers and followers of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, that's gathered throughout the four corners of the earth. The name of this show is Esau has no chance in hell. He got no chance. All right. Now you heard Elder Ricard from the GOCC. Basically, when you listen to that whole two, three hours of nonsense of him trying to save his slave masters, um, basically what he was saying that we're being ingenuous by being on the streets just telling white people they're going into slavery when we should be telling white people to repent, which is not scriptural. Then he says that, you know, we shouldn't hate Edomites because that's in the law when that's not contextual, correct, and he errs not understanding and knowing the scriptures, okay? And, um... We're going to go into it. We're going to go into it. Because basically what he's saying is only the Most High and the Son can hate Edomites. We are not allowed to hate Edomites. And only the Most High and His Son is going to bring judgment upon the nations. We're not going to do nothing. You know, we're just going to be, you know, the chosen people. But in regards of judgment, we're not going to be issuing judgment. All right, but first and foremost, I wanted to cover this. This is in the Zondervan Bible, uh, Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary. All right, and this is the definition that they have for Edom. Edom figures prominently in the prophetic scriptures as the scene of great future judgment. When you read throughout the scriptures, there's nothing really positive written about Esau or Edom. There's nothing positive or beneficial in regards to the promise, in regards to blessings, in regards to anything concerning the Mosai and his son 
in regards to the nation of Esau, Edom, and their descendants. Okay? So it says, in the prophetic scriptures, as the scene of great future judgments. I wanted to look up this word judgment up in Google. It says, um, one, the ability to, to make considered decisions or come to sensible conclusions. But when you look up the second definition, it says a misfortune or calamity viewed as a divine punishment. A misfortune. So Esau's future is going to be a misfortune. Okay. Or calamity viewed as divine punishment. So Esau's future is going to be divine punishment. Punishment. We didn't come up with these um, definitions. This is what Esau Edom himself, okay, came up with as he read the scriptures and gave commentary on the scriptures. When you read about Esau Edom and their descendants and all throughout the scriptures, there is nothing positive. All right. So now let's get into the scriptures. All right, because he's trying his damnness to put Esau in some type of good light. Oh, all they have to do is repent and be baptized, then they could be saved, and they'll make it into the kingdom as nice servants. You know, they're gonna be like as they're gonna be like butlers and maids, and that's totally contradictory contradictory to the scriptures all right Esau got no chance in hell all right this is Isaiah chapter 42 verse 20 48 verse 22 there is no peace saith Yahweh unto the wicked all right but there is no peace for the wicked saith Yahweh all right so, even putting Esau, Edom, repenting in the same sentence is off and it's wicked. All right? Because all throughout the scriptures, there is nothing positive or beneficial for the house of Edom. All right? Now, this can apply to Jake as well. There is no peace save to Yahweh or to the wicked. This could apply to two-thirds of the nation of Israel as well. Because two-thirds is destined to be cut off and destroyed. All right? Thus saith the Lord. But they will be returned into the kingdom, come back in the kingdom um, through reincarnation. By being the descendants of the ones that will be saved, of the elect. All right? Now, let's get it. This is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. So this is in the New Testament. Re, um, reaccounting what happened in the Old Testament to prove a point, okay? Lest there be any fornicator. Now we know fornicating means believing in other philosophies, okay? They are being intimate with other philosophies, believing in other things outside of the Heavenly Father and His Son. And profane meaning out of the temple, meaning they are outside, void of judgment, void of the Lord's statutes and commandments, it says, person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. And we're going to read the NLT. Make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau. So we learn in the scriptures that Esau was a godless man who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. Because the firstborn son inherits everything from the father or the, the greater portion 
from the father. But he sold it for food. Red porridge, red uh, pottage. Okay. Verse 17. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessed, he was rejected. Let's look up that word, rejected. It says, it says dismiss as inadequate, inappropriate, or not one's taste. When you look up similar words, it says turn down, refuse, decline, dismiss, spurn, give something a miss, knock back, negative. So Esau was dismissed. Esau was inadequate, inappropriate. Or not one's taste. Turned down. Refused. Declined. Alright. He was rejected. From the blessing. Which Jacob received. And his descendants. Okay. For he was found. For he found no place of repentance. Though he said, saw it carefully with tears. He was traumatized. He was dealing with anxiety, depression, re rejection, re uh, regret, sorrows. All right. Reading the NLT, you know that afterward, when he had wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance. So if the forefather Esau was too late to repent because he sold out, he sold his soul, he sold his inheritance. All right. Sold the soul is just a terminology. He sold his inheritance for uh, 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 for red pottage, for red food. All right. He couldn't get back that blessing. He couldn't get back that promise. How much more his descendants? And this is why we live in, in um, the world that we live in. Why the controversy is so big amongst black and white people, brown and white people, Native Americans and white people, so-called. The reason why we're going through these things, because he's trying to get his blessing back. Going back all the way from the womb, when Isaac and Rebecca was, uh, when Rebecca was pregnant with Jacob and Esau, they was warring in Rebecca's stomach. So going back from the womb all the way to today, present day time, Jacob and Esau has been warring with each other. All right. So it said it was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. For ye, verse 18, King JV, for ye are not come onto the mount that might be torched and burnt. Oh, that was it. That was it on that. All right. So it was too late for Esau Edom to repent. How much more his descendants? All right. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 10, verse 4. The wicked through his pride of his continence will not seek after the Most High. The Most High is not in all his thoughts. The wicked are too proud to see the Most High. They seem to think that God is dead. They, had, they do not follow, believe, practice the ways of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Now, you got it misconstrued, like going back to the Herodian dynasty, all right, when those Edomites was taught the ways they they became converts, they learned the ways of the Torah and the ways of Israel, Judaism, so to speak. That you think that they are been in the Lord or they're repenting. I don't know. Well, honestly, I don't know what you think, but they wasn't the elect. They wasn't the chosen people. And. They was being wicked devils, right? Even though they was practicing so-called Torah, which they wasn't even practicing it. All right. Um. 
learn righteousness. Here we go. This is Isaiah chapter 26, verse 10. Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet will he not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he will deal unjustly. He will not behold the majesty of Yahweh. All right. So let favor be shown to the wicked. Let Esau have a chance to be in power. Let Esau have a chance to be in rulership. Let Esau... Have a chance to be in the land that was um, gifted to the chosen people, which are the Israelites. Let favor be shown to the wicked. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Right? He covered the faces of the judges thereof. And the earth is mourning. The people of the land is mourning. The inhabitants of the earth is mourning. Why? Because the wicked bear of rule. They have not learned righteousness. Yet will he not learn righteousness in the land of uprightness, the land of Israel, will he deal unjustly? Look at all these uh, wars, a, a, a proxy wars, a chaos, and riots all going on because the land, the people that's in the Middle East. You got a, 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 a whole bunch of nations, three different nations fighting for the Holy Land. Why is there so much war and turmoil in the holy land? Because the holy people are not dwelling there. Well, not ruling. All right. It says, your kindness to the wicked does not make them do good. Although others do right, the wicked keep doing wrong and take no notice of Yahweh's majesty. And that's exactly the M.O. of Esau and Edom. And now I'm going to wrap it up with this because basically he said that Revelation 13, 9 and 10, that we're not going to do nothing. It's going to be Christ, you know, and we know that his name isn't Christ. His name is Yahusha. And the way to say Christ in the Hebrew is Mashiach, which means anointed. I would even prefer you just say anointed. Is saying that damn word Christ, you know. Um, Ezekiel, what is it, 25 and 12? Once again, there's nothing good about Esau or Edom in the scriptures. Ezekiel 25 and 12, thus saith the Lord power, because that Edom have dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance. And have greatly offended and revenged itself upon him. This is what Sovereign Lord says. The people of Edom have sinned greatly by avenging themselves against the people of Judah. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom. And I will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Teman. And they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. All right. And I will lay vengeance upon my hand, upon Edom. This is the point. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. So, though the Most High and the Son is bringing the judgment upon the earth, it's going to be executed by the hand of his people Israel. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith Yahweh power. <laughs> Excuse me. It says, and they shall know my vengeance, saith Yahweh power. And it says, I'm going to read it in NLT. I will accomplish this by the hand of my people Israel. They will carry out my vengeance with anger. And Edom will know that this vengeance is from me. I, the sovereign Yahweh, have spoken. So, the hands of the Lord's people is his uh, chosen people, which are the Israelites. You so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians from North Central and South America. You are going to be the ones that execute the judgment on the planet Earth. 
You are the ones that's going to be putting shackles upon these crackers. You're the one that's going to be putting them on slave ships. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians are going to be dividing the family of these Caucasian people. You are going to... um. A man is going to uh, marry his wife and then you're going to split them up and send them to one plantation and then the wife is going to go to another plantation. They're going to have kids. You're going to split the kids up. The one, the brother is going to go to one plantation. The sister is going to go to another plantation because that's what they did to God's chosen people. And he read it himself. He that killeth with the sword must be. He said there's going to be service in the kingdom. But Christ is going to do it. But this scripture said by the hand of his people Israel. But pretty much that said, I'm going to wrap it up. Lord's will part two coming soon. Stay tuned. On to the next. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Barak Thumb. Kal Halayim, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Kal Halayim, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. Shalom on.